Now you guys don't know where we are, but we're in Kevin's shop. The new and improved. The new and improved Kevin's shop. He swept up, he pressure washed, and he swept again, he found concrete. <laughs> <laughs> we are finally getting on this little uh, 4VT, even though it's not. It's not a 4VT. It's not a 4VT. It's the next generation, which is, I don't remember what it is. Well, we'll find out once we tear that all down to absolutely nothing because we suspect bent rods or spun bearing. Number two bearings out of it. I'm gonna put my money on it. Yeah. Okay. And possibly bent rod, which started the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. So if that's all that it is, not so bad. Big scored cylinder means more yeah. money. Yeah. But we're gonna. But we're gonna know I, either way, I think I want to hire your professional pressure washer because this thing did not look like this last time we saw it. But anyway, we're gonna get into it. There we go. First things first, drain the fluid. And if we were in the old shop, we would keep the dust down. We just pull the plug <laughs> and let her go. But now we gotta clean that mess up. Now we got concrete, all this extra time because then it becomes a slip and slide. One of us is slipping and not the one jaw off the, the door. <laughs> <laughs> so, is it what if you, uh, yeah, get that out from there? You got no cooling either. Well, it's just if I take the turn this loose, does it all come out the front? No, oh, that, that'll still work. Then it all comes out the front. Hey, we want, we want to come out, we want to come out that hose. You're asking a lot from engineers who don't care. <laughs> It'll be there a while. Yeah. Anyway. You gotta clean that out every now and then. Yeah? Yeah, every well the rat does clip out. Every but... time you blow a... <laughs> blow every a time you blow an engine. <laughs> oh, the garbage bag. <laughs> Nothing like something simple, just driving you mad. Yeah. It's just supposed to come out. What? It doesn't swing? Well, so this, the problem is, as you see down here, what? There's a hose clamp down there, right? Oh. So you're thinking you can just unscrew and take it off, but the the screw, like the the head of the thing is like, you gotta like come this way. Yep. To get at it. So thank you whoever built this thing at the factory. If they just would have turned that, like you could have put that whole stamp on the exact same way, but just had it flip yep. the other way around so the thing was pointing off, yep. and we could get it apart. But I don't know how the heck they put that together. Guys, <laughs> just do, do you think the guy lays in bed at night going? Because <laughs> yeah, there's no plate that lines up with that. <laughs> no, <laughs> just like laying in bed going, that sucker. <laughs> nice floors. All right, well, I miss the old shop. So. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it was doing over there. It was soaking up oil. <laughs> yeah, but it's done its job. Here's we got the four bolts that hold the pump to the plate. Take those off. The engine mounts. Front and back. There's only front, the one on the front, two on the bottom. Messing the fuse there. cover. Found that. Hey! <laughs> it's even washed. See, there's uh, just there's plate it. running underneath this pump. Yeah. But is it bolted on the front here? And then uh, wiring harness. I just took the whole starter off, unplugged that, just so we got a little bit more room. The exhaust looks like it's never coming off again. That's, that's <laughs> just part of the it's, engine now. It's now, <laughs> it's now completely part of the head. <laughs> yeah. It'll be difficult machining that head with the exhaust on there, but. Um, yeah, then, so this plate, this plate here, Rich, there's this angle plate underneath. Yep. And it's got one, it's got three bolts on it. One's really, really hard to get at. Yeah, there's bolts here going up into the pump. Oh, that's really mean. It is really mean. Is there a plate through the bottom or holes in the bottom that line up with that? Because they were thinking ahead and they were really nice. Well, two of these bolts would be easy to get at, but the one in the middle. But that's the. Suck. Well, they're like these bolts, 
right? Yeah, that's the plate holding it to the bell housing. Like the old 1845C is you just took those bolts out and you went clunk and the pump fell off. There's one thing in the front. But then they didn't have the they didn't have the uh, auxiliary pump in the front. It was in the back of the engine. Ah, uh, well, they could have put that right here. <laughs> yeah, what were they thinking? So that's gonna make life a little miserable. Okay, so for that plate underneath, um, we just put extensions all the way through the front and then a bar on it and you can get it. So there's there's that angle plate that goes underneath the pump and there's two on each side that you gotta get, so four in total. Top ones are 17, the bottom ones are 15? No, top ones are 18, the bottom ones are 16. Okay. <laughs> Top, top ones are 18 millimeters, the bottom ones are 16 millimeters. A lot of cheap sets miss. They skip 16 and 18. Yeah. You used to hate that at the shop. You buy a set of wrenches and they go 15 and then they go 17 and then they go 19. It's like, what the yep. heck? So I, I bought, uh, or I have these wrenches, but there's, they're so tight, there's no way that those wrenches would work. So that just slipped, you said? It just slipped. It, was, it wasn't on 100%. I thought you could get it, but... What well, was your job to watch that? Well, I wasn't watching it. I definitely saw it slip off. I was doing my thing. <laughs> Can you hold that uh, yeah, hold the thing up? Between. Oh, you just good. keep taking bolts out until it comes apart. Yeah. Right? Nice. Yeah, if it's tight, it's because so it's there's a little awesome. see that coupler in there? Yep. So that's But now now you got room. It should be yeah. able to come in. But we should, that whole thing's just sitting there, so we should just be able to pick that up and yeah. get it out. So All right. it. Are we gonna see if a Japanese forklift starts on a cold Canadian winter day? Oh, cold start videos work are it's probably the best title for this video is Cold Start on Kevin's Forklift. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares about the Cummins removal? I got to freaky twice. <laughs> That's our cop. Look at that! Oh! Yeah, there she is. I don't know if these are the mounts are the same as a 5.9, but that plate is bolt to oh, these okay. four bolts. You got bolts for that? Uh, I don't, but they're probably the same as your mounts, these guys. Got a little Princess Auto stand. I basically take all the arms off and then just Stick them in the mounts on the side. I think you might want to tap. There's quite a bit of crap in these holes. Yeah. Mm. Definitely worth cleaning. The only one was clean because the ground was on it. I gotta take this home and just gotta notch this because that's hitting the drain for the would be turbo, um, which would be the drain right there, rather than running around trying to find the can't, battery's dead in the Dewalt. So there's no point. So we're just gonna, that's a good place to stop anyway, cause we're not gonna pull this thing apart tonight anyway. So we will be back in the in the morning. All right, Kevin. Paints a shot, washing his hands with running water and everything. Hot water. Yeah, two, two sinks, one for me, one for Three you. Three sinks. Three sinks. Three sinks. <laughs> Hot water. <laughs> this is fancy pants. Okay, the engine's out. We got the, uh, bolts here out of the exhaust manifold. Lots of penetrating oil and uh, vibration on with the impact wrench, the three eights. See, they start to uh, corrode, right? Cause they're out in the open there. And then, and then they got to snap there. Two of them needed 
needed a little heat on to get out, but just a little, little propane torch did the trick. So I'm gonna take this thing outside and wash it because you, know, you wash it in the machine, but you know, it's still got crap all over it in places. So we're just gonna uh, cover up all these holes, stick the alternator off, and then we'll wash it up and get it on the stand and start ripping into it. Okay, here we go, it's on the stand. I am skeptical of this stand, to be honest with you. Rich said he had a 5.9 on there, so it should hold this one, but I don't know, I'm gonna leave the forklift on it until we get some of the weight off. I took the flywheel off. We'll get this rear bell housing off and the uh, exhaust off and some of the stuff off the front. And then we'll uh, get the head off and uh, see if the uh, one piston, I'm assuming number two piston doesn't come all the way up because that one was low on compression, but and then we'll roll it around and take the pan off and see what bearings out of it because we're pretty convinced number two rod is out because it's got a knock in it. So here we go. So that bell housing is a timing cover too. It's all one complete unit. So I don't know what you gotta do to, if you ever wanted to repurpose this engine or find another engine to fit in there. Um, I guess the plate on the back of our skid steer, it's easy enough, but for anything else, that's, uh, that's quite, the, quite the ordeal. So anyways, we're now gonna take the fuel injectors out. I'm assuming they're gonna come out very easily and then uh, valve covers off and we're gonna pop the head. So that's what we're up to next. This is number one. It's the one that, it's not the one that was low on compression. That doesn't look that great. There's not a lot of wear on there. All right, we're gonna roll it over and see uh, if one doesn't come to the top. Well, that looks to me like they're the same. dial indicator after two measurements. Is it what? 14? That's zero. 14, zero. That one's 14. 14 above. This one is quite a bit higher. This one is right here. This is almost 34. I wonder if that's the bearing we got out of it. But I don't think we got a bent rod. Well, this one's about 11, that one's 14. So these two, these three are the same. This one's way, way higher. If you had a bent rod, you'd think, why would it be higher? But it almost looks like it was hitting the valve. And I wonder if that's what our knocking noise is. Let's have a look at the head. I don't know what you guys think, but these three looks like proper combustion. This one, this one does not. 
What's going on? It was number two that had the low compression, so now I'm confused. All right, well, we're gonna pull the bottom end apart. Put the pan off and see what we can see. See, we got a bearing piled up here. It's fractured rods. See that? So you can't machine the rods. So this is not going to be cheap. Yeah, folks, we're going to be into a crank grind. So I don't know what happened here. Still a mystery why number two was short of compression. But that's. It's not so good. And that rod's gonna be, gonna be toast too. That's very bad. That's very bad to be in the oil pan. So how many of these little pieces made their way through the engine? So she's all coming apart now. Okay, so gotta have a little puller. Gear off. Uh, I was screwing up on my recording skills, but. So you missed it all. Yeah, that's just a tapered shaft. The... So it's gonna be the time that you're gonna, it probably must be a mark on the pump somewhere. A little flag or something. Yeah, and pull that out. And take that. Pull this up maybe? One of those. And that's, then... uh, that's future Kevin's problem. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and then turn the pump and then get you at first top dead center and. Yeah. Like the because uh, there's no mark on the gear, right? Is there anywhere that? Oh, right here. So this will be oh, yeah, yeah. like the other common ones. You got to yep. pin the pin the camshaft gear and then find the one on the. Yeah. yeah. So awesome. we should have done. We should have locked that pump up before we took the gear off. Nah, we'll be all right. Yeah. There's we'll yeah. It's typical. So um, now it's crankshaft. Yeah, we'll get the timing cover off. So, right, like we got this bearing here spun. Yeah. Right. So, well, we'll get the crank out and then we'll roll it over. You can't see it like this. It just, there's not a lot of wear in the cylinders, but I'm thinking we should pull the pistons and probably deglaze the cylinders, putting the rings in. Yeah, right? yeah, because the cost of the rings. Number two has had low compression, so something's going on. Yeah. I should get you to take your valve spring compressor. We could pull the valves out of the head. See what they look like. I can't remember if I have one. You had one before. I did. Yes, I do. Right. Yeah, I do. Do we have another combo? Yeah, if you don't mind. And I'll uh, I'll just pop off the uh, timing cover. Timing cover here. We gotta get that camshaft gear out first. I'll take this gear off. Yeah, but how how are you gonna get this gear with the cam out with this in the way? I guess that not. gear has to come off first. Oh yeah, that's because this timing cover isn't coming off oh, with this gear in the way. A, this is my normal Cummins. This no, is this is the new and improved Cummins. It's a I forget the name of it, but it's not a regular 4BT. It's a little different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I guess pull that off and take a look. Just keep taking bolts out. Eventually, you'll come hard. <laughs> so your mains are all numbered. It's always good to take a picture just while you're taking it apart, numbers towards the oil filter, and then your rods are cracked, which only go together one way. But you probably do, should make sure yeah. you you still have the opportunity to mix match caps. Yeah. So. so anyway, but we need a new rod over here because this one's been spun. Okay. Right. But it's not. So, so the did you talk about the compression on that already? And but this one is the one that was. This was the one that was low on compression. Yes. So we thought number two was going to be goofed. Yeah. It still could be. Isn't it? Yeah. We, we don't have number two apart yet. Right, it still right. could be. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but this one, the, that so, one so that could have the chunks from this one go through it. Like. Yeah. Well, let's right? turn it around and okay. have a look, see. All right. But that one, yeah, as soon as we took it apart, we could see it was piled up. Yeah. That was a knock. 
piston up. I can, I can catch the piston if you want to push it up. Put the caps back on. Okay. A little, little bit of air, but doesn't matter. Still work it. That's better too much than not enough. Marking. Yeah, we learned that when we did the Steiger, right? Yeah. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> We've only been in the trade for 20 years each. <laughs> Okay, well you can see, like we measured when we started, and uh, it was number one piston was coming up higher than the rest, but none of the rods look bent, eh? No, uh, that's 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 hard to tell. Though, it's hard to it's tell, but of an when, you get, when we were bringing them, like rolling it over, so number one was, was out of whack, but that was because his bearing was spun, right? So I think we're, uh, we're pretty much uh, in, uh, agreement that this was number one it's definitely because this thing was running on its side right? yes it wasn't that, that's it wasn't, oil deprivation it and wasn't that, hydro locked when I, it got started it was it ran out right yeah but i still don't know why number two was low on compression when we tested it because we checked it a bunch of times yeah and the pistons look so good the and, only reason for that would be bent rod but when you checked it coming up on yeah, yeah it's hard right you check it and then you move your like you check with the dowel indicator, right? And yeah. you check compared the rest. And it seemed to be in the two and three and four, we're all within a couple of thou from each other, like five thou or less yeah. of each other. The number one was way out. It was coming up way too high. Like, how is that? So then the only reason we- These two were pretty much right on with each other. So, but then the only reason for low compression is we messed up the compression test, but we did it multiple yeah, times. Yeah, unless there's a valve leaking. Yes, so that's next. Or that's the head gasket leaking, but it doesn't look like it. Right? It doesn't look like there's anything leaking here. No. Could have an injector seal leaking. Maybe multiple reasons, right? Because that injector was the one that was a real pig to get out. Yeah. Well, but then we had, but that's where we had the compression tester in was that injector hole. Yeah. Right? So. Maybe it wasn't sealing in that injector hole because it was dirty possibly. dirtier than the rest possibly i don't like i don't like not having an answer there's well there has to be a reason so well, anyway yeah we'll, we'll pull the valves valve off out. and see take a look. <laughs> and see if see if we can i don't know we gotta do a little adjustment here i think we're gonna do the head on this but this should get out and get a valve job done yeah okay right then i would leave the valves in it oh i'm just curious so and see if we could Oh, this is interesting. What do you see, Kevin? Well, you see this, it's it's shiny here and it's dark here. Oh, right. yeah. It is kind of shiny all the way around. Okay. But your guides are sloppy too. A little bit. So a little bit. But if you're gonna do all the work of putting rings and, and turn the crank and everything, why, uh, why wouldn't you spend $35 and get the head done. <laughs> <laughs> I, have a, I have a grinder and a flapper wheel too. I can do it for 30. <laughs> got a, got a, a bucket of lapping compound. Isn't that all you need? <laughs> but you can see the seats are, uh, the seats are pitted up. This exhaust seat here. Yeah. You can see it's carbon up there, right? Yeah. And that's not just the light this time. No. Well, we can tell. It's just the light. Yeah, I see it's... It's not uh, great. They're not great. So Could, we're going to make them great. Yep. Yeah. Might as well. Awesome. So we're going to pull that off, take the intake off, and yeah. we're going to drop it off at Scott's. Is that who does it? North Town, yeah. All right, yeah. Awesome. Yep. If some, so see, this is... 
right? Shouldn't it look more like this? Should be That's cleaner, exhaust. Yeah. That's the intake. No, it's gonna pearl like a cut and have a yeah. lot of power when you That's do right. So. It's hard to tell whether that's good or not. But if you look at the lobes, like are we gonna light it? Are they all scratched? No, they're not. Okay, we're gonna take a chance. What was oil pressure before we pulled it? <laughs> <laughs> Holding the light right. We gotta get these these lobes right, like the sides there. Yeah. We can take the screws out too, but yeah, I think it's good. Yeah. It's not all like it's not all chewed up, right? I'd price one out. Yeah, we'll if price one out. Cheap enough, we'll just throw it away. No one cheap. coming, it'll be eighteen hundred dollars. Yeah, eighteen hundred dollars off up. That one's be fine. So pull the cam out. I would check the lobes and I would clean everything. You got shit on there. Yeah, I got shit on there. Well, that's because we'll clean it out. But I'm wondering if, like, I'm guessing the cam bearings aren't aren't like that's usually the last thing to go, yeah. right? When you get well, oil, like unless the, it, unless it's an LS. All the main bearings, right? All the main bearings are pretty good yet. The rod bearing, that one rod bearing shot. Yeah. But how'd we run it for uh, another, you know, day the way it was? Yeah. I, I'd pull a, it out have, because it doesn't take anything. Just double yeah, check. Clean but it, yeah. I wouldn't get too. Well, I can just pull it out right now. That's not take very long. Sounds good. At this point, you know, I might as well pull out all the all the squirters, coolers, yeah. all the squirters, and then just give it a good cleaning, right? Yeah. Now, do you pressure wash when you clean? I have, oh. but I don't like it. You don't like it? I don't know. Like it's water and turn into rust. Like I have, but normally those are on engines we pull the sleeves out of. Right. Right. Good news. They all look really good. Yeah. Is it only a bearing in the front? Is there even bearing? Cam journals look good. Yeah, the journals look good, but is there? Yeah, I know, and I've had that. Um, yeah, there's just one in the front. Yeah. Which is, I don't know. That, which is really easy to change. Which but is really easy to change, I, I but what happens when the rest are wore out, then you just get to buy a new block? Yeah, I guess, eh? <laughs> is there a ridge? Not that you're gonna bore that out anyway. I'd clean the ridge and then I'd put a home through it. Yeah, I, just a ball horn. Yeah, there's do, not even much, there's not a ridge on there. No, the pistons came out pretty nice. I can't, can't finish. That's why I'm saying, it's almost uh, could almost do the real poor man one if just pull the crank out, leave the pistons in the holes. Yeah. <laughs> Done that before. <laughs> then you can just get it out far enough to get the pin. Oh no, how did we do that? We must have pulled the one out. Yeah, you're here anyway. Yeah, Rings I know. In a ball horn. You no, know, well, why would you not? The thing's got. 3,000 hours on it, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Rings, ball hone, and then... Uh, Send the head out. Send the head out. And... Crank out. Crank out, no turbochargers, so I'll over that. Oh, it's on A? Yeah. Oh. You want to put a turbo on it? Maybe we should, eh? Yeah. Thinking I'm gonna maybe put, throw a water pump on it, too, because that's a real pain in the ass change when it's in there. Yeah. And there we go. Awesome. All right, so do you... You're confident enough in your Princess Auto dial indicator that yes. that rod is not bent? Yes, I'm quite confident. Because these two were, you checked the video. These two just, came up the same. I know, but I just don't understand why our compression was so low. I, yeah. I, 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 unless you're confident that it's the valves. There's got to be a reason for something. Or unless it's the whole, of the, the, because that injector was the one that was the hardest to get out. So yes. unless it wasn't, our tool wasn't sealing all the way in there. Or maybe it's hard to get out because there's a lot of compression going past the valves already. Does that do something? No? No. Still wouldn't. No, that doesn't have anything to do with it. I don't know. But I was quite, I thought for sure we would find, because these two come together, right? I thought for sure one was going to be, that number two was going to be short. Yeah. But as soon as we pulled the head off, the top of number one, like these, well, you can see the tops of the pistons, right? Like you see that one's the way you should be, right? Yeah. Like burnt, right? Compression. Yeah. Combustion. And this one was right. Right. 
Like something's wrong number one. I thought it was number two that we had the trouble yeah. with. And then we pulled the pan off and we saw the, the bearing was sitting on top of itself. Oh yeah, there he is. <laughs> There's the woodpecker. All right, crank's getting sent out. That takes a couple of weeks. Um, head's going away. Head's going away. That takes a couple of weeks. So um, Rich has to clean the block with his toothbrush. That's right. That's going to take a month. That's going to take a month. <laughs> I got a lot of stuff on the go too. Um, but I'm charging them daily rental on my engine stand, so yeah. I don't mind. That's all good. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, I guess uh, next video will be showing the entire process. We'll send the crank out, come back, we'll reassemble the whole thing and put it back in and put you it back to work. plastic gauge it when you put it together? I, where you can get it? No, do you plastic gauge your cranks? I have, yeah. I don't yeah. see there's anything wrong with it. Yeah. I think normally we always did just to double check. Yeah. 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 Uh, Scott measures the bore with the bearings in it and then measures the crank journal and then but how do you do the block one then? I don't know he's magic <laughs> he's got like a bore gauge I guess with the caps on it and then he measures that yeah and but then, I don't know. we gotta send him the block then too? no oh, no if you plastic gauge it uh, but I've never had one that the clearances weren't you just, send, you just send the crank out and then yeah. they grind it they send you bearings where they tell you what to order yeah and then we plastic gauge it and normally it's bang on yeah that's how it's always been with me. Yeah. So that's what we're going to do. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, don't forget to go to the other channel. Lots of stuff happening there. Sorry for the big pauses in between on heavy duty, but um, we can only do one thing at a time. So here we go.